Well, welcome to this color correction tutorial with 3-point edit. Hello. Anyway, I'm using Blender 2.5 or 2.57 to be more correct. It's a new release from blender.org. Of course, my, this software is best known for its 3D um, uh, animation capabilities, but little known fact, it has a very capable video editor built right in. Anyway, we're going to start off making some pretty straightforward color corrections. Uh, as you can see, I've started out with a basic video editing layout and just a couple of strips in the sequencer. At the top, I've laid out the uh, sequencer display window. At the moment, it's showing this video. Here it is. And I'm going to add some scope so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to the corner. I'll drag out another window, maybe about that big. Resize the little display port there. I'm going to change this to a waveform monitor. Shrink that down a bit. And the waveform monitor shows you dark at the bottom and brightness at the top. I'm also going to make another scope by dragging that corner down. And in here I'm going to put a vector scope. And around the vector scope you can see some colors that indicates regions of um, more or less color indicated by this graticule. At the moment it's a little bit warm, that's why it's pointing towards a yellow. Next thing we'll do, uh, you'll notice over here I've added a gra F F-curve editor in the graph window and we'll use that later for mixing from one to another. Now as I scrub through these clips you might notice the start of the clip is quite dark and then at the end it brightens up a fair bit. And you can see all the bright bit up here. Uh, we're going to try and f match the dark stuff with the bright stuff. And uh, we've got to correct the overall color imbalance which is a little bit warm. Shooting with my 550D I didn't have Magic Lantern installed and therefore couldn't wipe balance effectively. I've since fixed that. Now the first thing we'll do is select the strip we want to color correct first. That's this one. I've clicked, selected that by clicking on it. Next I'll press the N key. The N key shows me the properties panel for that clip. Uh, you'll see the clip name up here. I'm going to scroll down the clip to use color balance. I'll click on that and normally to color correct we would use these wheels. Now I'm not going to do that today because I want to reuse this color effect. So discarding that I'm going to right mouse click on here so it's selected. I'm going to add an effect. So we'll go add menu, effect strip and up to transform. Now it's added another strip on top of our source footage and this strip is called the transform strip. It allows you to resize or move your image around. The other thing it does is allow you to add a color correction on top of your uh, source video clip. Now I think this is, a, this is a pretty neutral clip really but we'll just add a bit of um, color correction to, uh, to demonstrate its effectiveness. Now I'm going to grab the middle color wheel here and move it back a little bit to blue to cool down the image and you can see here that the whole lot is quite a bit cooler. It's probably too blue really but it'll do for now. Now I can audition that by turning off the color wheel, turning it back on. Now <coughs> I want to reuse that color clip so what I'm going to do is go to my next source strip that I'd like to apply that transform effect to and I'm going to, oh, first of all I should have duplicated this, sorry, stepping back a step. We'll go back to the transform effect that we've just made the color correction to. I'm going to do Shift D to duplicate the clip. You'll notice that it's still locked to the source. I will select the next shot that I want to repurpose that transform to, so retarget to. I'm going to Shift select the other item and I'm going to go down to Strip and press R key for reassign inputs and it jumps across. So that's the R key to reassign the inputs. I can simply drag that down and now that color effect is also applied to the other item. That's great, so now we can make multiple color corrections and add them to any clip that we want to on the timeline. I guess if you had a large range of clips you could also meta them all together and then apply one color correction to those rather than do that duplicate and reassign all the time. Next thing what we want to do is make the beginning of this clip brighter and mix to the mix to the brighter shot at the end. So what I'm going to do is move down the timeline. I'm going to mark the timeline where it begins to brighten 
and I'll move along to where it's finished brightening and put another marker in there. So now we know where we want the transition to occur. I will select my transform effect and this time I'm going to add another transform on top but use this as my source. So I'm going to make sure that the transform um, strip is selected. I'm going to do an additive effect on top. So we'll go add effect transform. So anything I do to this top transform effect will be in addition to the one below it, not working on the original camera footage. So we'll go use co color balance again and this time, park back here, I'm going to raise these video levels. I'll first of all put in a little bit of gain to raise the wh white level brightness levels up and maybe a little bit of gamma lift in the mid-tone regions as well. Now if we click down the end we'll see this is very much brighter than I wanted it to be. So what we're going to do is make a keyframe to mix between the two. We scroll back to the top. I'm going to change the type of transform effect from a replace, which has completely replaced the clip, to a cross, which is really a dissolve type effect. So parked at the beginning of my transition, I'm going to hover over my opacity value here and press I key and it's become a keyframe. You'll notice up here in the F-curve editor that I've now got a little keyframe. And if I move down to my other marker, I can place another keyframe, press I, and I can change that value down to zero. And you'll notice that the waveform monitor is changing as well to reflect that. And it's mixing back down to this first transform effect. And if I go over to my F-curve editor and press the home key, we should see that it's changed. Oh, it hasn't changed. Let's see, what have I done wrong? Need to jump jump to my keyframe. It hasn't accepted the keyframe change. I go down to there. Press I again perhaps. Ah, I didn't press I, that was the problem. I go back to my F curve editor, press home, and we'll see a nice curve displayed there where it starts at 100 percent and goes down to zero. I'll park move back here on the clip and press play or alt A. It plays through the transition and it darkens back down to the original clip. So there you have it. So that's a straightforward colour correction in Blender between uh, two types of colour transformations. Now I hope you enjoyed my first tutorial. Sorry if it was a bit rusty. Um, now no matter what platform you use, uh, Linux, Windows or Mac, you'll find that Blender's VSE is a great free portable tool for video editing and it's improving all the time, especially with the new uh, open source movies they produce. Check out uh, back at our blog for any updates at Blender's VSE uh, for any tips and good luck.